Okay, it's that time of the year. It's the big one. It's the Sephora sale. The sale happens November 1st through 11th. In this video, I'm gonna give you all of my makeup recommendations. And in the next video, I'm gonna give you skincare, body care, fragrance, and hair care. I do like to break this down by category. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know. Everything's gonna be timestamped and I will also include my previous Sephora recommendations. But I like to go in order of like base and then I do cheeks and then we do eyes and we'll finish with lips. I feel like since April, which which was the last Sephora sale, I actually have quite a few new recommendations, things that are in the mix. So I'm excited to share these with you. I will have all of the sale info on screen as well as in the description box, just because it's a lot to talk through. I will also include application videos, swatches, wherever possible. I usually have dedicated reviews of each product. So I'll include that. We'll edit it into the video as much as possible, just so you can actually see the product in action. And I am also wearing a full face of my Sephora favorites. So let's get right into it starting with base. Starting with primer, I am not typically a big primer person. I just find that good skincare is the best primer you can have. However, I do like to add in a luminous primer. Lately, I've really been loving the Dior Star Filter. This is the shade number two. And it's basically their answer to Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. This has a little bit more radiance to it. I'm wearing it on the top of my cheekbones here and you can see like, I mean, obviously under the lights, it's super bright, but I also wear it all over. The texture itself is very thin and so I'm able to apply it all over the face without it feeling heavy or greasy And I really love the shade too. It's a very like neutral undertone But there are 10 shades in this range. So it's very inclusive just a gorgeous product Definitely for someone who likes a little bit of bling like I don't wear this every single day But for special occasions, I just I don't know It makes the skin look so good and like polished There are many other primers that I've mentioned and loved before the in Beauty Project Face Glaze. It's like a gel cream texture. is a little bit more subtle than the Dior Star Filter for like an everyday glow. I also love Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. I'm gonna do some honorable mentions as we go without going into detail on every single one, just because this would take forever. But any of the primers I've mentioned in my previous videos, I do love. I've just been reaching for Star Filter the most lately. For our foundations, I'm actually gonna start with low coverage and move into high coverage. This is a long-standing product in my favorites. It's the Summer Friday Sheer Skin Tint. I wear the shade four. I rediscovered this a couple of months ago. I mean, I've, I loved it when it first released and then it kind of got shoved to the back of my drawers and I recently pulled it out again and I love it. It's the perfect thing for light coverage. It'll even over redness. It doesn't have a lot of actual pigment in it, but it does this like beautiful blurring glowy thing where it creates this sort of filtered veil over the skin. For me, it's like a perfect day-to-day -day product where if I don't want to think about something too much. I don't want to worry about streakiness. I don't want to worry about like, is the coverage even? I just want my skin to look good. That's when I reach for this. Another product that won't be a surprise is the CL Tint and Protect Skin Tint. This is beautiful and it has a pretty solid medium coverage. It also has SPF 50 in the form of mineral filters. However, I wouldn't rely on this as your primary SPF. Definitely use it as a little bit of extra stuff in your makeup. Don't rely on it for your primary sun protection. I'll have my SPF recommendations in my skincare video next. But this is just beautiful and it is radiant, but it has like a natural radiant finish. It does everything that I want it to do. It covers over redness. I don't even use concealer really when I use this. It applies beautifully with fingers, with a brush. It blurs over pores. It makes the skin look really smooth. It just looks really good. There was a period for several months where this was the only base product I was using just because it's so flexible, it's buildable. It's really, really stunning. And then for foundations, I have a couple of different picks. So I recently reviewed the Huda Beauty Easy Blur Foundation. I'm actually wearing it today. I wear the shade 220N Custard. And I do love the way it looks. It's not a product that is maybe like the most dry skin friendly. I talked about this in my review, but because this formula does have film formers in it, I think it's actually best for normal to oily skin types. But it does blur over texture really beautifully. 
beautifully and I really, really like it. And I've been relying on it more for when I want higher coverage. It's not full, full, full coverage. That's not really my taste, but it is beautiful and it just makes the skin look so gorgeous. But it's not for dry skin, I will say that. Another foundation that I love, um, I actually loved the original version more, but they reformulated it and I still think it's beautiful. It's the Dior Backstage Foundation. I reviewed this last year when they reformulated it. It took a while for it to grow on me just because I loved the original so much, but this is also stunning. I wear the shade Too Warm Olive, which actually really matches me now. The original Too Warm Olive used to be a little bit deeper, but I find that it's lighter and more neutral and it actually suits my skin now. This is a great long wear foundation because it is water resistant. It's actually designed for runway. And so it really holds on onto the skin. Like it actually stays on the skin all day. It goes on really thin. It's a fluid texture. And I actually do find that it's blurring over texture. It makes my skin look really smooth and it's a go-to for me for long wear days. So hopefully there's something in these foundation recommendations for everyone and every skin type. And then moving on to concealer, I actually have two new concealers in my life that I've been loving. I recently reviewed this as well. This is the Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Foundation. I wear the shade 04. This is stunning for an everyday concealer. It's buildable for sure. I feel like you could get medium high coverage. I like medium coverage and I find that it's super stretchy. And what I mean by that is I can apply like one dot of concealer and one dot goes a really long way without losing coverage. It has this like beautiful stretchy quality to it. It's not too thick and it spreads on the skin in a really lovely way. And I find that it's actually long wearing. I don't think it actually has that claim, but I do find it to be super long wearing. And I mentioned it's kind of um, a little bit more hydrating of a version of Armani Power Fabric Concealer, which was a long time favorite for me. But this one is like a little bit better because it is a little bit more skin-like. It's not as matte. And then Ciel recently came out with their Conceal and Protect SPF 50. And I have to mention this because there are so few concealers out there in the world that have additional SPF coverage. Again, don't rely on this as your primary coverage, but I think especially for those of us who are really thinking about sun damage, about well aging, about protecting that delicate eye area, where sometimes it's hard to apply, you know, SPF really close to the lash line, having this added security of sun protection, I think is really nice. And this is a really serious concealer. I actually was really surprised by how much coverage it actually does have. So this is the doe foot applicator. I have the shade 09N and it's my best match right now. Um, I also have 06P that I swatched. These are the concealer swatches. That's 06P and 09N. This foundation really does cover. It's definitely buildable to like a full coverage. Also, Nikki DeRoos, the founder, is a makeup artist. So I feel like she really gets it when it comes to complexion and skin. I like to use these by applying it on the back of my hand and then applying it to the face rather than applying it to the face directly. I find that it gives you the most skin-like coverage, but they're really stunning. And if you're looking for extra sun protection, especially where you get like crow's feet and sunspots like around your eyes, I definitely recommend these. And then for powders, I have a loose powder, a pressed powder, and then like a tinted brightening powder. So my loose powder pick, I promise I didn't plan it this way. I just really love the brand. <laughs> it's the CL powder. They're filter and protect SPF 30. Again, this has added SPF. I won't keep repeating myself, but it's a really beautiful powder on its own. It's blurring. It's super finely milled. It's so skin-like and it's really, it just creates the most diffuse skin look over texture. And especially in the pore area, I, I just love it. It makes the skin look so like ethereal and blurred. This comes in three shades. That's the one I think shortcoming of this powder is I would love to see it in more shades. I wear the shade light, which has like a light yellowy tint. It also does come with a little bit of a puff, but I generally like to apply this with a brush. You definitely can use the puff if you want some like hardcore powdering, if you want more of a matte look. But the thing I like about this too is that it can be super matte if you use a lot of it or you use it to bake or really like press it into the skin. Or you can just do a light dusting and it holds makeup in place as well. My pressed powder pick is the Tower 28 Get Set Powder. I only have the translucent shade. I know it comes in a peach, a pink shade, and a banana shade, but I actually find, I don't love every pressed powder for setting makeup. Sometimes I like them better for touch-ups, but I actually find that this is good for setting makeup. I 
feel like I could use a little bit of a touch up now. So I just take a brush. The price point on this is really good too because it's Tower 28. I'll just touch up right here. You can see how instantly that blurs in my T-zone and like where I get the most oily, like here you see the shine, here it's already blurred and diffused. I'll do a bit on this side as well. It's so nice. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. I think that's how they keep the price point down. It's just the compact, there's no mirror, there's no puff, but I'm okay with that just because I actually think I like this more for setting. And you can certainly put a cushion puff or bring a cushion puff if you wanna use it for touch-ups. And then for a brightening powder, I have the Kosas powder and they recently released this in a pink shade, which I have here, the banana shade and a warmer peachy shade. So it is inclusive across a lot of different skin tones. I do like this original cloud set powder, but I don't find it's very long lasting in terms of setting. I think this is a powder that's amazing if you have dry skin or if you want a creamy powder that's not going to take away too much shine. I'm finding I'm reaching for this pink one more than the original cloud set because it's more of a targeted application and I like the creaminess around my under eyes. So I'm just gonna take this brush. This is the shade Candy. And I'm just gonna use it to set a little bit more around my under eyes. And it just kind of cancels out some of that darkness under the eyes without being so, so brightening. It's very subtle. Sometimes I do use different um, powders to set the under eyes than the face, just because the under eyes can be a little bit more dry and I don't want them to look cakey. And I don't want them to look like shriveled up. So I feel like a powder like this, that's a little bit creamier, that's a little bit more blurring and forgiving, can be really good for it around the eyes, especially especially if you're trying to brighten. And then for setting spray, there is only one on this list. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Setting Spray Airbrush Flawless. I have a mini, I have a jumbo one, I have a regular one. I love this. I find that it gives me the most long day wear without making my skin look dried out, without making it look filmy or making it feel tight. The only setting spray that I would say has rivaled this is one I've reviewed recently, which isn't even at Sephora, but I reach for this and the other one, the M Cosmetics one, interchangeably, honestly, because they're both beautiful and I love having a travel one to bring with me on trips and when I'm traveling. I feel like Charlotte Tilbury also has a lot of really good gift sets that include minis of that. I'm not including a ton of gift sets in this video, but I might follow up with a separate video on gift sets just because I am very particular and not every gift set is created equal. Some are way better in terms of value than others. So mental note to myself to do that. Let's move on to cheeks. We're gonna start with blush. I'm gonna start with cream liquid blush blush. The most like revolutionary cream blush I think for me this year was the Milk Makeup Cooling Water Jelly Tints. I love these so much. Um, they give you that really bright, punchy, popsicle stain look. I love them on the lips and the cheeks, which I can't say for all lip and cheek products. I do advise you use these with a brush. So I like to pick up product with a brush and then stamp it on my cheeks rather than drawing directly on the cheeks because they will stain. They are cheek and lip stains. I love the bright punch of color. They recently came out with two new shades of this that I think are absolutely stunning. And I'm really excited to see the expansion to the line. One of the shades is like a lighter shade, which I think is nice because the current, the original four shades are very punchy. But I actually, I knew this was like a real winner when I wore it to a wedding. And then after the wedding, we went in the jacuzzi, like after we got back to our Airbnb. And my sister-in-law said to me, like, I need to know what's on your cheeks because your blush has not moved all night. And she's like, we're sitting here in a jacuzzi and you're sweating and your, your blush looks exactly the same. And so I knew, I knew I was onto something. And I think that night I was wearing this shade, or no, I was wearing this shade, Chill, which I think is one of my favorites. It's this beautiful like raspberry pink, but I also wear Chill a lot. This is more of like a bright red. These are just the two that are at my desktop right now, but I, I love all of the shades, honestly. These are definitely a blush for someone who's not afraid of blush because they do have a stain quality to them. I would just say start light and build up. You can do a more natural application 
attention, but use a light hand to start. My newest blush in my collection is the one I'm actually wearing now. I recently reviewed, it's the Huda Beauty Blush Filter in the shade Strawberry Cream. It actually does smell like strawberries and cream, which I love. It, it fades instantly. It's just like a little thrill. I like to apply this on the back of my hand and then apply it to the cheek, but I find that it's super, super long wearing. It's not as intense as like the Rare Beauty blushes. Those are so pigmented that I think they can be a little bit intimidating. This is like, 80% of that, where it still gives you like a real punch and it's definitely buildable, but they're also long lasting, they set down. This would be a great option if you have oily skin because it's not dewy on the cheek, it actually does stay on the cheek throughout the day. This is the only shade I've tried of this. They also have like bronzer shades in this range. This is the only shade I've tried of this, but it's a perfect like everyday sort of blush shade for me. Probably one of the most used blush shades and just most used blushes of the year for me has been the CL blush in January. These also have an added SPF 50. It's great because I apply these really generously and the added SPF 50 on top of my actual SPF is great for the tops of the cheeks where you get the most sun damage. You know what I'm talking about? Like the area right under my sunglasses I feel like is where I get a lot of sun damage just because I have really high cheekbones. And the shade January is the most beautiful cool toned pink. And it is a baby pink but it blends out to the most beautiful like like fresh everyday neutral shade and I love this and it really lasts all day on me. I find that it's very forgiving. I can apply it super generously. I literally just swipe it across my cheek and then take a brush and diffuse it. Yeah, it's my favorite shade. But this does have a really good range of shades. Like there's a beautiful one called June. If you like Toasted Teddy, that sort of like bronzer sort of shade. There's a Dusty Rose, there's a Coral, like there's a shade for everyone in this range. This is one of the gift sets I'm mentioning in this video. This is the Merit Mini Flesh Balm set. And I just reviewed this set. I swatched all of the shades. I applied them to the cheeks. It has one new shade, which is called Bespoke, which I think is really beautiful. And it has two existing shades, Stockholm, which is a baby pink, and then Mood, which is a berry. I think this is a great option for people with dry skin. It's a very like dewy, balmy cream blush. It's not overly pigmented. So it's great for everyday use or if you're sort of gifting it to someone who does like more natural makeup. I don't think if you have any of these shades already, you'll find this set particularly useful, but if you want to try the range, there's a range of like light to deep shades in this. And I do love the new shade Bespoke. I think it's really pretty. It's like a pinky brown. It's a great everyday shade. I would love for them to bring this into the permanent collection just because it has this gorgeous like neutral undertone to it. But yeah, really cute set, really cute shades in this range range and I do think that's my pick for like dry skin people. For powder blushes I have a couple of things I, I'll just mention really quick. I definitely use cream and liquid a lot more. The House Labs blush in the shade French Rosette and I do really love this formula. It's super smooth. It's blurring. The only thing is I wish I had gotten that like earthy pink shade. I forget what it's called. I feel like I don't use this shade quite as much. It's more of like a statement blush but the formula itself is stunning and of course I do love the Hourglass blush blushes. I have my palettes from years past. I didn't pick up any this year, although I do think they're beautiful and they've certainly become much more inclusive in recent years than they were when they originally started releasing them. So I'll link those below. I do think the formula is actually like so stunning. I just don't have the current ones to show you. Moving into bronzers, I've definitely been using cream and liquid bronzers the most. And my most used one of the year is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzing and Shaping serum. I really love the shade light. It's what I have on around the perimeter of my face today. This is a very, very subtle bronzer. It's almost like, I don't know, you're like painting light layers on your face. That's how I think of it. It's not going to be like your intense bronzing product. Although you certainly could use it that way with a deeper shade. I have light medium and medium that I used in the summer. Right now, light is just the perfect neutral undertone for me. I don't know. I think I'm moving away from super warm bronzers in general, like my taste is changing. And I feel like this just, it does have a pearl running through it. It just makes your skin look so good and it makes your skin look glowy and it gives you a bronze without making you look like you're wearing bronzer. I don't know how else to describe it, but that is how it looks. It just makes your skin look really good. And because the texture is so thin and serum -y, it's easy to blend without telling where it starts and ends. Like I hate when you can see where you stopped blending your bronzer. I feel like that can happen with some cream 
cream bronzers that are too thick or that stick to the skin too hard. I feel like the serum texture just like glides and gives you the most seamless blend. If I want something a little bit more heavy duty, I still love my Westman Atelier contour stick. I wear the shade Truffle for a warmer bronze and then Biscuit for a more neutral, lighter bronze. This is heavy duty. It's gonna be long lasting. It's also really good to layer with the serum, but it is still really, really natural. It has a beautiful, diffused, gorgeous blend out. And then for cream contour, I am still here with the Milk Makeup Sculpt Stick. The shade Stoked is such a great, like true neutral undertone for me. And I feel like um, a lot of contour sticks out there run a little bit warm, but these are true cool tone shades. I don't contour a lot these days, but if I have a special event or I know I'm gonna be like photographed or something, it is nice to have in my arsenal. I don't actually have a powder bronzer here to show you because I just haven't been wearing powder bronzer lately. I just like a more natural bronzer look and I feel like a lot of powders just look powdery and I don't love that. So I'm gonna move into highlighters. I mentioned the Dior Star Filter, what I'm wearing today. You can definitely use this over or under foundation, over foundation if you want more of a highlighted look, which is what I did today. I also love the Dior Forever Glow Maximizer. This is their actual liquid highlighter and this comes in many different shades. This is the shade Peachy, which is this gorgeous, like I almost wear it as a blush topper. It's like a duochrome peachy champagne. So pretty. But this also comes in like a frosted white and in their true pink, in a bronzier shade. It blends out stunningly. There's no glitter in this, but it is highly reflective. It's also very weightless. It's not going to feel heavy or intense on the cheeks. It just gives you like the most beautiful glazed cheek look. And then I wasn't sure whether I should mention this in the base category or the cheeks category, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury Unreal Skin Sheer Glow Tint. They call it a hydrating foundation stick. Although to me, I use it as a highlighter. Like I use it in my cream highlighter step because it has quite quite a bit of glow and pearliness to it. It's not glittery and it is blurring. It's like a skin tint, glowy, blurring, pearly skin tint in a stick. I wear the shade three fair. I think I also have the shade four, but that's what it looks like on the back of the hand. You can see that gorgeous pearly reflection. I know some people do use this all over the face. For me, it's a little bit too glowy on my like oily combo skin to use it everywhere, but I do like to just generally draw it onto the face, especially across the forehead, tops of my cheekbones, and I just, like stipple it in with a brush. You can even blend it out with a sponge. And the unique thing about this is that a lot of cream highlighters, I don't know, sometimes they like catch on texture. Sometimes they're a little bit too opaque. This has a sheerness to it, but it also diffuses and blurs the skin. They actually have marketed it as like a skin filter look for the skin, but I kind of get it because it gives you this like surreal, ethereal glow on the cheeks. And that's why I like to use it in my highlighter step. Let's move into eyes and we're we're gonna talk about eyeshadow. This has been my simplest year when it comes to eyeshadow. I think obviously just makeup trends and like aesthetics right now are not super eye heavy, but I did just review this. It's the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette in Moonlight. I did five looks with this palette. I did swatches. It's a super in-depth review. I'll link it below, but I do think it's really stunning and it does capture the kind of makeup looks that I like to create now, which are definitely more neutral. They're slightly cool toned leaning and the shimmers in this are really stunning. They're like a little bit of fairy dust. They're not even glittery. They're not sparkly. They're just like twinkles on your eyes. It's really beautiful, but it also does create really amazing, like simple everyday eye looks. Oh, I'm wearing it today. <laughs> I forgot to say. Um, I'm wearing some of the mattes and then I'm wearing a mix of these two shimmer shades just all across the eye. And then I actually applied this gold shade in my inner corner. And this is like I don't know, like an everyday glam look. It's something that I could wear to dinner or whatever. It's not so over the top, although you can get really smoky and dramatic with this. My most used palette of the year is the Makeup by Mario Neutrals palette. And I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, oh, this looks quite similar to the Moonlight palette. And they kind of are. Like the mattes in this palette are quite similar to the tones in this, but this gives you so much versatility. Lately, I just kind of like to have a matte shade in the crease to really 
contour and sculpt the eye. And this gives you so much range. I like that there are pinky beiges, like pinky topes, sandy topes, these more chestnut shades, and then you get like true cool toned, like 90s matte gray and black. And I feel like it's such a good workhorse palette to have in your routine because you're able to do really simple eye looks, you're able to do more dramatic matte looks, or sometimes I just wanna wear a topper and I want something to like sculpt the eye before. And I just go into this. I literally have kept it on my vanity for all year since it came out because I use it all the time. So as much as I say I haven't been wearing eyeshadow, when I do wear it, it's it's been this. One eyeshadow I do have on my wish list I just wanna mention is the Colfi um, new shade, the Sona Sona shade. It's a cream eyeshadow. I have never owned actually one of their cream eyeshadows, but I always swatch them in store and they're so beautiful. They have this like ridiculous pigmented twinkle shine, like glossiness, like a wet looking shine to them. And Sona Sona is this like champagne shade that they've just come out with. So I think I might be picking that up personally in the sale, just wanted to mention that. For eyeliner, nothing new. I love the Urban Decay liners. My favorite liquid liners are actually not from Sephora, so I won't mention any of those, but the Urban Decay um, 24 hour pencils, there's just so much range. I use the shade Roach a lot. I use the shade like that purpley plum shade. I love their emerald shades. They're not new, but they just get the job done. Same thing with mascaras. I don't think I have a ton of new recommendations. One new one that I will say is if you want a tubing option, I do like the new Milk Makeup Tubing Mascara. That's been a great addition to their range. And then I have all of my old favorites, the Rare Beauty one, Lancome Lashy Doll, the pink one with the curved brush. For a waterproof version, I love the YSL Lash Clash, specifically in the waterproof version. I feel like a lot of brands haven't come out with new mascaras this year because the focus has really been on skin and cheeks. For brows, I feel like this year I've really embraced a much more natural brow look. I just kind of add some brow gel to enhance my natural brow shape and then I add some pencil. So I have a couple of things for that. The first one, I think I've mentioned this before, is the Lawless Brow Cream. I wear the shade Medium Dark. Sorry, it's actually called the Soft Set Creamy Brow Wax. I feel like it's a great descriptor for what it is. It gives you a bit of fluffiness and hold, and I feel like it actually does give you more of like a feathery brow look, but it doesn't get crunchy and it doesn't get hard. It doesn't flake. It just um, is enough to give my brows some hold, especially in the front of the brow. And I feel like it's tinted enough that I can actually use this without a pencil on like a more natural brow day if I just wanna do this. And even with makeup on, like it just gives me enough, one and done. Recently I tested the new Glossier Boy Brow Pencil and I really like this. I wear the shade Cool Brown. It has this like very, very fine, slightly angled nano tip pencil. Really great shade for me. I feel like it's not too gray. It's not olive. It's just a true cool brown. So I've been really liking that for detail work or for filling in sort of like sparse areas on the brow. With this, they sent over their original boy brow, but I feel like they've revamped it. I don't know. I haven't tried it in like three or four years, but I am wearing this again. I have the shade brown and I feel like it's great for actually filling in the brow a bit. And I feel like it's not a as wet as it used to be. I actually like these together. I don't generally like boy brow only on its own. I feel like it doesn't give me as much precision in terms of application as the Lawless. But I do really like these together and I feel like this gives me the precision, this gives me the fluffiness and the hold. So I just wanted to mention that. And then my Shiseido Lash Curler is still the best. I do like to buy the refill pads during the sale just because I'm restocking on like my essentials, but it gives me the best curl, the best hold. It gets close to my eye. If you have a similar eye shape to mine, you might like this too. And then finally, we're on to lip products. I have every kind of lip product imaginable. I have lip oils, lip balms, liners, lipsticks, shiny lipsticks, matte lipsticks. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start with lip balms, specifically like tinted lip balms. One of my favorite releases this year has been the Edem Le Chouchou Softening Lip Balms. 
They came out with this in a clear and then a whole range of shades. I have swatches that I'll include here, but I pulled some of my favorite ones. The one that I actually had to grab from my handbag is called Bissip Glaze. They all look like this. The packaging is very chic and it is a liquid lip balm. So it has this really cute, like cooling metal tip applicator. Bissip Glaze is the most gorgeous, like blackberry kind of shade and it's tinted, but it shears out. It looks so stunning on the lips. And the other one I love is called Fig Sauce, which is more of like a warm brownie pink right there. And these are super comfortable and nourishing on the lips. I use the clear one like as an actual lip balm. I also love the Summer Fridays lip balms. I recently got the um, Summer Fridays hot cocoa one, which I used in a makeup look recently. Hot cocoa smells amazing, so yummy. And it has this like really warm brown shade and it shears out on the lips, but it is really nice and toasty. I have these in honestly like every shade. I have one in every handbag. I love their original vanilla beige. I love their birthday cake one. I have the pink one in another handbag. So these are just the ones that are at my desk right now. This is the shade Latte. Again, love these. I love that they continue to expand the shade range. This is the kind of thing that again, just like lives in every purse, lives by my desk. And these are all lip balms that I can use actually as like nourishing lip treatments, whether they're tinted or not. A new category under lips has been lip SPF. I'm so excited to see this lip category continue to grow because something I learned about this year is that my lips will get dermatitis if they get sunburned. I feel like I'm just becoming more sensitive to the sun as I get older. I just feel like lips are where we often forget sun protection. Like you think about sunscreen, you think about your face, your body, but oftentimes I forget my lips. These are the In Beauty Project Sun Balms. They have mineral SPF 30. So they're not gonna leave you with like a chemically sunscreen taste. I hate when that happens with chemical SPF lip balms. So these look like this. They have like an angled applicator. That's what that looks like. And here are the three shades. So this is pink. This is rosy brown, and this is the shade Latte. I feel like it's a nice little range. Pink is nice for everyday wear. I actually really love the shade of rosy brown on its own. I would love for them to come out with this in a clear form, because I feel like I want lip SPF that's not always tinted, but I do love the shades of these, and I think it's a cute little curation. I'd love to see them expand this range. I wore these to a two-day trip to Disney this year in the middle of July. It was like the middle of summer, and they actually, not to be dramatic, but they did save my life because I think it was like a week or two before I had gotten my lips sunburned and then they broke out in little sun bumps and hives everywhere So I was like I can't go through that again and this really really helped me and then for lip oils and glosses These two are actually some of my most worn lip products of the year So this is the house lab the PhD hybrid lip glaze This is the shade guava which for me is like a perfect nude gloss and it is thick like it is really grippy. It's gonna stay on your lips. I actually really like this kind of formula because I feel like I can eat, I can drink, and it doesn't come off. This is the shade Guava. It's a really beautiful, like neutral, warm pink. On me, it just kind of looks like my lip color, but I love that this actually, because of the thickness, it like creates this coat over your lips and it really seals in moisture. I find that this actually helps when I have chapped lips. It really does deliver moisture. The other one is the In Beauty Project Lip Glaze. This is my most worn shade. This is the shade Candy Apple. I've used it about halfway and I have another one in a handbag that's about empty. This is another really thick, glazy, like glassy lip oil. It's also really moisturizing and it also does a similar thing where it just makes your lips so, so, so shiny. Even more high shine, I think, than the House Labs one. And it smells stunning. These don't, or at least this shade doesn't have a ton of pigment, but it does bring out the natural red shade in your lips and it just makes your lips look so big and so like glossy and kissable. I love it. They also have some shades like Merlot. This is another one that I love that are a little bit more pigmented. They're not as sheer just because they're deeper in pigment on my skin tone. You can see that there. Merlot is like a beautiful wine stain. Really good for fall and winter actually, but they have a ton of shades in this range. And then if you like a lip oil gloss that's maybe not as thick but equally nourishing. The Milk Makeup Odyssey lip oil glosses are stunning. They actually just came out with four new shades to their original shade range and these just released a couple of months ago. I love both of these shades. The shade Wander is a really 
really pretty like cool toned mauve pink. It's basically like a really good nude on me, but it does have like a, almost like a baby pink quality to it. It shears out on the lips. That is Wander. And if you are someone that loves serious shine, I know this looks scary in the tube. This is the shade Adventure. It is glittery, but on the lips, it just adds so much shine and dimension. It doesn't actually look glittery on the lips. I don't know how to describe it because it shears out. Um, it does have like a duochrome quality to it. It's not an everyday gloss for me, but it is a gloss top topper for when I want just like extra shine and I want to bring out that like pinky shade. So those are all of my lip oil selections, lip oil slash gloss. And then for lip liners, I love and still use all of my old favorites. I love my Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Anywhere Caffeine. Um, I love Endless Cacao, of course. I also love the Tower 28 pencils, but I have a couple of new additions this year that I'm super excited about. I just reviewed these. These are the Refi Lip Blur this is kind of like a not traditional lip liner in that they're more like a lip pencil, but they create a blurred diffused lip line. It's almost like a matte waxy balm, but it creates the most beautiful like cloud-like blend if you are into that sort of lip look. I have a review of these, so I will include that here. And then the Glossier lip line, which released earlier this year. This is such a good shade range of lip liners. I just pulled a couple of my favorites. This is like a waxy pencil. It's not like a wood pencil, but I find that the formula itself, it has glide when you apply it, but it's super, super long lasting once you let it set down. So this is the shade Plush looks like that would be beautiful on a deeper skin tone than mine. I also really like the shade Bit for more of a pinky shade. And then for a brown, I love the shade Nip. These also blend out beautifully if you want to create a blurred lip line, but they really seriously last all day long, even if I top them with a gloss. Sometimes I feel like lip liners, when I use a gloss on top, it all just kind of mushes together. I feel like this actually stays on my lip line, which is really nice. I even have a couple of other shades I love that I think are in my handbags right now. That's how much I use them. I like use them probably multiple times a week. If I am wearing a lip look, I've been reaching for those. And then finally, I have lipstick. I'm gonna go from like sheer to really pigmented lipsticks. I first wanna mention the Merit Dress Code Lip Set because I think it's maybe the best makeup lip set out there this year because it includes all three new shades of different lip formulas, including a brand new lip formula from Merit. It. That's actually what I'm wearing on my lips today. This is the lip blush. It's a new formula That's almost like the signature lipstick and their matte lipstick had a baby. It's like a creamy matte blurred balm sort of product. This is the shade du jour and it's a gorgeous like beigey pink. I love how neutral it is. It's not exactly cool toned. It doesn't wash me out, but it's definitely neutral and it's a really nice like everyday sort of shade. I also just reviewed this whole set. Their new shade Bespoke in their signature lip is also stunning. It's like a pinky brown. And of course this year they came out with their signature lip. This is a, sh a berry shade called Black Tie. That's again exclusive to this set. And that is a super again like blurred diffused lip it's more matte than their new lip blush which is why I think I like this but I also love that formula if you wanted to get it on its own I will swatch my other shades but this is the dress code lip set that is the lip blush shade that I'm wearing now but honestly there's like an everyday shade a bolder shade like a smokier neutral it's just such a balanced makeup set with all new shades which again I just think are fantastic so I had to mention those let me show you my other shades of the Merit Signature Lip Matte. So the first one that I got right when this launched was the shade Antibes, which is a gorgeous peach. It's definitely warm. Even though these are matte, they're very comfortable and they're quite long wearing on the lips. And then I got the shade Sunday, which is the most beautiful, like punchy, cool toned pink. So that is Sunday. It's really bright. It has like a 60s pop of color. That is Antibes. And then that is the original um, Merit set 
that I talked about. They just create such cool, sophisticated, like interesting shades that you don't often see in other ranges. Continuing with that matte blurred lip trend, which I feel like has been really big this year. I really fell in love with the Prada lipsticks this year. I know they're bougie. That's why I'm mentioning them during the sale. The packaging alone is absolutely stunning. I have two different shades. These are creamy. They're comfortable on the lips. This is what the tube looks like. So this is the shade Auburn. This is what the tube looks like. This is actually a perfect fall lipstick. I haven't worn it this fall yet. I'm really glad I pulled it out. So this is a soft matte lipstick. It has about, I don't know, like 75% pigmentation or opacity. You can still see the skin through it. If you layer it on, obviously it's gonna get more pigmented, but if you want to create a more like sheer blurred lip, you can definitely do that, especially if you blend it out with a brush. And Auburn is just the most beautiful ready brown, such a stunning fall shade. Over the summer, I wore this a lot. Um, I grabbed the shade P155, which I think is called Candy or something. This is what it looks like. Again, it's like a 60s pink. I've been really into cool toned pinks this year, if you can't tell. But that is the shade Candy, and it's like such a playful, flirty, fun pink. I don't have any like true nudes in this formula, but I am actually thinking about grabbing a couple of these during the sale. That's what I'll be shopping. And then finally, Finally, the Westman Atelier lipsticks are the most beautiful, super pigmented, full coverage matte lipsticks. Um, I have this. Sh I have three shades. This is Pip, which I wore a lot this summer. It's like the most beautiful bright red. And I hope you can see the tube itself has these hearts embossed on it. And it has this gorgeous, like weighty magnetic packaging. Obviously it's Westman Atelier, so it is luxurious. They also have a really cute holiday lip set that I'm definitely interested in. But let me just, that was one swipe. I'm not even kidding. It's like fluorescent. So pretty, so fun. This is the shade LFG. Let me actually swatch this. That is a serious hot pink. It's so bright that like my camera is struggling to pick up the true color of this lipstick. And then the last shade I have is Je Rêve, which is um, a much more of an everyday shade. This is the one I wear the most and it's a beautiful, like it's like a rosewood, but it has a bit of smokiness to it. It's actually also a really good fall shade. Oh, and I do want to mention the Prada lipsticks and the Westman Atelier lipsticks are both refillable, which is nice, especially with the Westman Atelier. Like this packaging is so stunning. You literally just pull this out and that is the refillable segment of it and you keep the actual tube, which is this gorgeous like enamel. Okay, I think that is everything. I always get anxiety when I film these videos because I'm like, oh no, like what if I leave something out? I wanna make sure I include as much detail as I can for you guys. I do wanna say I stand by all of my past recommendations. I'll link that playlist of past recommendations below if you are curious, but I just had so many new things to talk about this year. So I really hope you enjoyed. I hope that this is helpful for you guys. If you did find it helpful, I would love for you to subscribe. Like I mentioned, my next videos are gonna have skincare, hair care, body, fragrance, all of that good stuff. So keep an eye out for that. And if you have any questions about, you know, things you're looking for, recommendations that you need specifically, feel free to leave them in the comments. I always like engaging with you guys there. One thing I did want to mention at the top of this video that I'm just remembering is that, you know, I know there's a lot of pressure around holiday shopping and holiday sales. By no means do I want you to feel pressure from me. I like to use these videos as an opportunity to do a ton of reviews and give you like a big makeup guide. And it's something that you can come back to year after year, season after season. I don't want you to, you know, be pressured into making hasty shopping decisions. I think we all feel that around the holidays. And certainly this has not been the easiest year for a lot of people. So I just wanted to mention that. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and making smart decisions. I will see you in the next video, which you can consider more of a review guide if you're not into like the shopping portion of it. So I hope you guys do enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye!